I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. No, no, no. All right, first up, these are now in stock brownages. These are my favorite Band-Aid company. In five towns. Yes, and so um, when Band-Aid brand says flesh tone, Band-Aids, not quite. But now. Brownages takes care of that. And this is a cool minority owned business. Um, this is one of my favorite companies and we ne we've had these at Adafruit for our team and now we have them in the store as well. Next up. Next up, S3 box from Espressive. This is a new eval box board thing from Espressive. Um, it's got a two inch uh, capacitive touch screen, dual microphone. It's got a little port and a stand. Um, this is using the new ESP32 S3, which is a dual core uh, chip with some AI, you know, neural net acceleration stuff for machine learning. Um, they're kind of positioning it as a very inexpensive, uh, low power way to do um, voice recognition. Uh, so that's why it's got the two microphones. But it's also kind of a nice little dev board if you just want to get started with the ESP32 S3. I'll say as of the making of this video, there is no Arduino and CircuitPython support. It's coming very soon, um, but you're expected to use the ESP Espressive IDF uh, to write code for this chip. That said, you know, if you're familiar with the ESP32 or the ESP32 S2, it's in the same family. It's a 10 silica, you know, 240 megahertz processor, dual core, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and they just kind of wrapped it up in a very nice thing with speakers and microphone and sensors and all. Next up. Okay, we've got a um, hot air kit. Uh, this is the ST862D. Sorry, I have to write the part number. Um, this is a very nice hot air station. Um, it's got a digital control with a digital output. Um, presets, it's of course great for lead free. And it comes with four nozzles. And the nozzles kind of got this cool like kind of tilty effect thing going on here. Um, makes it a little bit easier to hold great. it when you want to um, angle it towards your circuit board. Um, this is a, uh, you know, it's, it's as good as um, stations that are three times as much, basically. Um, it's compact, but it's very powerful. And um, we carry a lot of stuff from Atten. Uh, the soldering irons are very reliable, dependable. So um, this is a very nice, very compact, um, hot air station. So I'll probably be taking um, one of these home because it's, uh, I find that, you know, if you're doing rework, if you're doing SMT at home, if you, um, you don't want to uh, reflow boards, even if you do a little mini reflow or preheat boards for rework, um, this is a really great uh, hot air station. Okay, next up. Okay, this is a very small SD card. Well, it's a micro SD card, so it's physically small, but also has um, a small amount of memory in it. And you might be wondering why have something so small. Well, there's actually um, a lot of times where we find uh, older devices do not want SDHC, they want SD cards. And also there's some times where you have a data logger and you just don't need that much memory. Um, and you don't want to, you know, kind of the price of memory has stayed the same, but the amount of memory you get um, has um, increased in size. So like you can't really get four gigabyte cards anymore. It's really hard, but there's a lot of times where you maybe want a smaller card. And so um, these cards are 128 megabytes. So they're perfectly great for a lot of text data logging and they're inexpensive and they're SD, which means that there are some devices that don't want SDHC or XC cards that these will work fine for. Next up. This is the most powerful servo we have. Be afraid, be very afraid. It's this Metal Gear servo. Uh, as you can see, it's got, um, you know, it can be driven at a high voltage, 27 uh, kilogram centimeters of torque. Um, 0.14 seconds at, uh, at 60 hertz uh, motion. Um, this is a scary uh, servo, but you know maybe you want something really strong. So used for like little miniature airplane type kits, but there are times where you're like, look, I want to move something. I don't want to get like a, a geared stepper. And I don't want to get a geared DC motor. I want a servo, but I just need to be more powerful. It's a standard servo, it uses standard servo signaling, but it's just like super chonky. All Metal Gear, I think it's like bearingless motor. It's just intense. Um, you get about 180 degrees of motion back and forth, just like you expect. Um, it's got some chonky um, uh, accessories as well. Yeah, and it's servo horns. Shy alud. Yeah, that's just <laughs> so you can see. Some people are like, oh, will this work with this, you know, metal horn? We tell you the number of um, splines, and also here's the, the quite thick plastic horns that it comes with. Okay. 
Next up, Kachunk. Big Kyle. Kale. Kale big. Kale big. Kale big. Um, we finally uh, got a, re, a refab run of these huge kale switches. Um, they're 64 times the size of a normal switch. They're four by four by four times bigger. Um, so the volume is 64 times as large. Um, as you can see here, they're, they're very friendly for hand clicking. We have three different colors. Each one is a little different. So bump is um, tactile. So the red one is tactile. The blue one is clicky. It says click. And then the yellow one is linear. It just says clack. But it's, it's a smooth linear feel. Um, so they don't quite match. I don't think they quite match the original kale stem colors. But it doesn't matter. Um, three different versions. Um, you know, they look just like normal kale box switches, you know, Cherry MX style, but they're just massive. Look, they're great as fidget toys. They're great if you just want to like be very satisfied by pressing a button. You can wire them up to one of our Neo Key Trinkies if you want to make a single key input. Um, maybe I'll hold this up so you can see how big it is. It's quite big. This is a clicky one. It's extremely clicky. Demon head. I'm, I'm pressing your skull. Um, even has like the positioning spot and the two tabs on the bottom, um, and a very beautiful uh, copper uh, spring yeah. to them. Be gonna sell out. This is so chunky. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very very satisfying. Okay. All right. All right, in stock for your clicky clacky needs, okay. your large clicky clacky needs. And the star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, our community, our customers, our team, and everyone who's been just keeping us going for all this time, here it is. The KB2040. Yay, it's in the store. It's a new RP2040 based board. It looks a lot like the Itsy Bitsy, but it has a totally different pinout. This pinout is Pro Micro compatible, and this is specifically because Ever since we made um, the keyboard library support um, in CircuitPython and HID support for the RP2040, folks have been like, I really want to use this for a keyboard build. And like pretty much every keyboard kit we know of uses the Pro Micro as like the standard footprint and you would solder in a Pro Micro board. But in this case, you can solder in this board um, instead of a Pro Micro and you get a much, much more powerful chip compared to like um, the Atmega 32U4, which has 32K of flash, and I think 2K of RAM, 2.5K of RAM. Um, this has 256K of RAM, so like 128 times as much. Um, and it has a massive 8 megabytes of flash, so you can use it as a file system or for storing code. Um, it's still got a ton of pins available. Um, it's got four analog pins, and um, it's 3-volt logic, as, so it's compatible with um, you know almost every um, keyboard. Um, there's also an onboard NeoPixel. There's two buttons, one for boot and reset, because you'll use that to load code onto it. Um, it's got a 500 milliamp, 3.3 uh, volt um, regulator. It's got the raw output. And on the bottom of the board, um, there's a jumper. So if you want to drive a lot of NeoPixels, and there's, there's an onboard fuse, just like the you know, Pro Micro for 500 milliamps or so. If you need a lot more current, um, just shorten the jumper on the bottom of the board and that will connect the USB 5 volt directly to raw so you can get up to two amps from your um, USB power supply or USB port. Although one amp is kind of as much as I recommend. You can get two, but you know, one is usually um, recommended. There's a um, type C USB connection. And then for the two little spots at the top of the board that are not used on the Pro Micro, I brought out the D plus and D minus pins. Um, this is a little non-standard, but I figured there's people who um, want to maybe use a different USB cable or connector, and it's usually hard to get to the data pins for USB. So this is like an easy way to, um, to get to them if you want to add a different you know, panel mount USB connection. And then, um, let's see, there's a little NeoPixel on board. USB-C, stem connector. Oh, so the stem connector is interesting. So, you know, if you go back, there's a standard pinout, which has, um, you know, starting with TX and RX, which are digital I.O. So uh, there's, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So it's 10 on one side, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So there's 18 GPIO pins. The analog pins can be GPIO. Um, that your uh, RX and TX pins are GPIO, the SPI pins are GPIO. But um, for some 65% uh, 
keyboard kits or you know if you just need you, uh, those uh, sometimes are five by 15 layouts and then you know maybe you need more than um, uh, 18 pins maybe you want a hundred keyboard kit and so you need two more GPIOs so that stem QT port actually gives you two more GPIO pins without changing the footprint of the board so you get 20 total um, so if you need 5 by 15 you can get it and you don't have to desolder or rework anything just grab a stem QT cable plug it in and then use the uh, yellow and blue wires as two more GPIO pins. This is the Pro Micro for keyboard folks that everyone's been waiting for. It works with CircuitPython. Cool thing, it shows up as a USB drive and it can be programmed from the keyboard you build yourself and then you can also mm. make CircuitPython not boot up as a drive too. It is, I think, gonna be the most popular way people make keyboards. Yeah, as of this uh, video, there is not QMK support. However, there is a pull request where people are working on QMK support and I'm yep. almost positive that it'll, it'll eventually get ported over. Until then, you can use KMK or you can just use CircuitPython. We have really good uh, key matrix scanning support like natively built in. It does all your key scanning for you in the background and just give you key events, uh, presses and releases. So you can just like skip all that part of your code and just go straight to the, the keyboard design that you wanna do. And uh, I know I said this is the star of the show in their products, but I have a... Uh, there's one more. But wait, there's more. There's more. So starting at 12.01 a.m. this Friday, we are it's giving away free pink feather RP2040s. That's right. You wanted them. You're like, how can I get them? You didn't get them. So we are doing special. We did a special round of 1,000 pink feather RP2040s shown here with a random thing that doesn't make any sense. Um, come for the headers. <laughs> it's okay. Um, cool pink and black uh, silk screen on the back. Um, it's the Feather RP24 you know and love with eight megabytes of flash and uh, STEM QT connector, a NeoPixel, um, CircuitPython support, Arduino support, MicroPython support. It's P pink. It's made with support. love. And uh, just check the site out, adafruit.com slash free at 12.01. AM Eastern pink. time. We're going to be doing these as part of our freebies. When we're, they're out, they're out. We might do them again. Who knows? But this will be it. I'm telling everybody right now. Book, and we will eventually have these for sale, but Maybe. not anytime soon. Maybe. These are exclusively for Maybe. the giveaway. You want to do a fun giveaway yeah. uh, for Feather Friday and uh, Circuit Python Monday. So yep. throughout this weekend, order $99 or more of stuff and you'll get one of these. Yeah, just uh, uh, look at this site, 12 and 1 a.m. on Friday Eastern time. And that's new products. Thanks. Thanks.